Our government believes that the Bahamian people have a need to know how their elected officials are managing the affairs of the nation, especially during times of crisis. Protecting the Bahamian people from Grand Bahama in the north to Inagra in the south, from threats to their safety and security is a priority of our government and my most important job as Minister of National Security. COVID-19 has put our healthcare and security structures under tremendous strain. On Sunday, March 15th of this year, the nation recorded its first case of COVID-19. To date, the Bahamas is one of 213 countries and territories around the world which have reported COVID-19 cases. We continue to make substantial progress and stay on schedule despite the challenges faced by COVID-19. Using our three-pronged approach on strategic planning, investment in human capital development and technology. With reference to the latter, I am pleased to share some of the successes today. In respect to our CCTV project, to date, 221 of the almost 507 cameras have been installed throughout the island of New Providence. The project is scheduled to be completed by the end of this year. The Royal Bahamas Police Force's Real-Time Crime Center has been stood up and was stood up on July 30th and is fully operational. Body and dash cameras, 200 dash and body cams were introduced to the Royal Bahamas Police Force on August 14th of this year. In respect to Marco's alert system, all of the billboards have been installed and they are presently going through a testing phase as we speak. In respect to our ankle bracelet project, we are in the vendor testing phase and will announce a winning bid sometime this month. In respect to our multi-agency drones program, we are quite active in, in, that, in respect to that program. In respect to our criminal security and justice program, the tenders board process for the digitization and the modernization of the court's integrated case management system has commenced. And we expect to sign a contract sometime this month. In summary, the state of safety and security relative to criminal offenses and rehabilitative matters is good. There remains work to be done. In short, crime is once again trending downward by 10% compared to last year this time. Recidivism has been reduced to 14%. And if the trend continues, it will reflect a 2% percentage point decrease from last year when it stood at 16%. Meanwhile, Illegal poaching and drug smuggling interdictions are up. Six interception in respect to illegal poaching and 884 pounds of marijuana seized, respectively. The impact on the Parliamentary Registration Department is evident. The virus has hindered participation in a most treasured democratic process that is fundamental to our democracy. To date, both our local government and school board elections have been postponed. Like 70 other countries around the world, the electoral processes have been impacted by the outbreak of the virus. Our parliamentary commissioner and his team were scheduled to begin the voters registration process in July of this year. However, cognizant of the health and safety concerns, the exercise was delayed. Presently, extensive research and consultation with various stakeholders is occurring, and a recommendation will be made to the government on the best way forward. We await further feedback on the consultative process, and a decision will be made on voters' registration and the public duly advised. Rest assured, that our government is committed to ensuring 
that no eligible voter will be disenfranchised due to COVID-19. My brothers and sisters, our government is fully committed to ensuring the unity in the socio-constructs of Bahamian culturalism and democratic principles and processes which help maintain its sovereignty and its social institutions. The socioeconomic success and sustainable development of the Bahamas is inextricably tied to the safety and security and health of its people. Each individual efforts leads to the collective safety of all.